feed powered ads. And uh, what basically what, what we're trying to do is we were answering the question of I have an RSS feed, now what? What do I do with that feed? And the concept that we're trying to get across is, is uh, letting letting a, 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 an advertiser leverage their RSS assets to do more with them. They've already created these feeds, they have all this content. So we were saying, why don't we take those assets and turn them into advertising? So what we're doing is we're taking the, the RSS feed and we're turning that into an ad unit. A 160 by 600 to start. And then as the feed updates, so does the ad unit. And the ad unit is then populated with the feed content. So this is not the editorial. It's broken up into three spots, three pieces of editorial. Fill in here. So one, one, two, and three. And then the brand's logo is up here. Now, that's great. So it's dynamically changing at uh, dynamically changing ad units. But what we done, what we added to that is a subscription mechanism down here. So as a user is, is seen, or a potential uh, or a potential customer or user is visiting a website, they're seeing this ad unit, they can actually subscribe to the content right from the ad unit. But what we do is then we take this ad unit and then we distribute that across uh, the FIDO network of blog sites and websites that match who okay. the target the customer is trying to go after. So that just goes out to the websites here. Okay, But we didn't stop there, we took that a step further. And what we're trying to do is engage the customers. Okay. And how we're doing that, typically what you have in advertising is your uh, advertising is meant to attract people who are ready to buy. That's, that's the holy grail. Right. And then at the other, the other end of the spectrum are those people who are just not ready, not interested in your product. Well, most advertising tries to focus to try to find this group of people down here, and that's why you have a, you know, whatever the industry average is these days, 0.05% click-through rate on, on your advertisements, all right? So, uh, what we're saying, there's all this other group, of, a whole other group of people out here that you can actually engage with, right? There, there are the people that, that are, that um, say, Oh, I already have this particular product, um, and I love it. Let me comment on it. So in the ad unit, you can click on a comment tab and actually comment on the product. Or you know what? I'm not interested in that product, but I know who somebody. I know somebody who is interested. So you can actually email that item uh, to someone, uh, which then of course creates uh, word of mouth marketing, right? Uh, in addition to that, is I don't have time to click through to this site right now, um, or I just want to come back to it later, so let me save it, so I can save it with, uh, uh, and bookmark it, and come back to it later, right? So in using any of the social bookmarking uh, services out there right now. Um, so what, what we're trying to do is attract a bigger pool of people, um, try to get away from just one measurement of engagement, which was the click-through rate, right? And now, you know, as we talked about before, people can can subscribe subscribe to that content from that advertiser um, right from the ad unit. To now, we now that's the holy grail, right? Now, that if, if if you're not going to get them to buy, at least get them to get them to subscribe to the feed, and you have a, a loyal captive audience when they subscribe to that feed. And then you can walk them along the buying cycle to get up to here, right? Okay, well, that's, I, I, I like what you're doing. I, to me, it's very exciting for a couple of reasons. First of all, what I think you're doing is, is you're, you're starting to build a customer relationship before the sale. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason you're doing that, in, from the perspective that I have, yeah. is that uh, let me back up just a tad here. In my view, all buyers buy with one of two personalities, buying personalities. One is the indifferent one when they buy on, on the best trade-off between price and convenience. Okay? And those people are inherently not loyal. In fact, you have to keep bidding for their business. On the other side, the engaged customer, 
is seeking something that's meaningful to them. They will get involved in it, and that involvement leads to commitment, high lifetime value, advocacy. It's the, it's the fuel for word about it. It's the fuel for a lot of things. And typically companies see the engagement process happening at the point of sale, where they're trying to make, make it so that it's a downhill thing, so it's easier to buy from them. Or afterwards, during the consumption phase. So if I have a good experience with it, like a Harley does, they go to the, they go to the rallies and they do all these things, so they're having this interaction with it. So the customer experience becomes very powerful to them. So they create this long-term, high-value customer. Mm -hmm. What you're doing here is, is two things. By providing this framework for the customer or the potential customer, and I actually think they're they're already in the customer phase, they just haven't transacted, they haven't bought anything yet. But so they're going to have all of the influences that they're potentially the advocate for early on, and you're giving them the tools to do that. Um, well, and something you said, give, not only giving them fuel, right? Yeah. You take, we're, we're providing that they, they make it a kindling. Uh, right. Better. Right. Well, well yeah. yeah. In a sense, let's go back to this word, word of mouth. One of the things we talked about before is you mentioned word of mouth marketing. And I don't believe there is such a thing, okay? I think word of mouth is the consequence of clever marketing, and that's what this model does. This is the mechanism that leads to word of mouth. It enables it. enables it, yeah. okay? So that's, yeah. that's important. So you're, you're doing two things. You are being inherently, you're, you are, in a sense, filtering out customers who won't become engaged with the offering, okay? Not the product, but the more, the, that don't have an inherent interest in it. So the people that have got their hand halfway up, these are going to be high quality customers that will bring in other high quality customers. That's the nature of advocacy. Okay, that's very important because it means that the marketing resources are leveraged. Okay, as opposed to diluted by trying to talk to people that will buy on price and for the wrong reasons. The second thing is, is that you are moving them into becoming heavily involved so that they are now going to be the advocates, but also you have an opportunity for any number of the follow-ups because you have a relationship or a dialogue with them to encourage and move down the pathways for when they're ready or any number of other ways, any other, other directions. It might not be the specific product, but they're going to tip their hand and tell you. So this is really very, very powerful and very exciting.